for the simple things. Like how much this is gonna hurt. Rocket Raccoon, the funny character you know, the tragic backstory you don't. Rocket Raccoon has been one of the most fun characters of the MCU whose lively presence has added an element of entertainment in many movies and comics. Though he appears to be quite cheerful and merry, he hasn't had the easiest life and actually has a very tragic backstory that hasn't been covered in any of the movies. Created by Bill Mantlo and Keith Giffen, Rocket Raccoon first appeared in the Incredible Hulk comics in 1982 and has been a part of various comics and movies, most popularly in his role in The Guardians of the Galaxy. Today, let us explore his tragic origins, which have often been overlooked due to his fun-filled presence in the MCU. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Yeah. The lesser known backstory of the furry, pent sized fighter. Rocket Raccoon's origins have never really been explored, and most of his scenes in the Guardians of the Galaxy movie focused on his relationship with Groot or the other Guardians. However, before becoming a Guardian, Rocket Raccoon led a tragic life as a genetically enhanced creature created by robots on the planet Half World. These robots were the caretakers of a planet full of mentally ill people, but they eventually got tired of this role and wished to explore the other side of this planet. They genetically engineered animals, such as raccoons, to make them cybernetic humanoids against their wish, and then hand them, them the task of caring for these mentally ill patients. Rocket Raccoon, or 89P13, was one of these animals and was constantly subjected to genetic testing and bodily enhancements. He was tormented by these robots who wanted to ensure they had created a sentient and intelligent being. The robots then abandoned Rocket Raccoon and the other animals to take care of the patients and they themselves left to exploit the rest of the planet's resources. Though the comics haven't fully revealed his past, filmmaker James Gunn, who made the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, hinted that there is a lot more to his tragic past than just being abandoned by the robots. Rocket Raccoon's life was full of various hurdles and traumatic events which can be seen even in the first Guardians of the Galaxy film. In the movie, Rocket Raccoon appears to be still quite shaken up by his past and often comes off as aggressive or violent. However, this behavior is just a trauma response after being genetically modified against his will and forced to be a caretaker to Half-World's mentally ill patients. As a result, Rocket Raccoon is quite cynical and has a hard time trusting people and connecting with the Guardians initially. Rocket also worked as a bounty hunter and had a long history of crimes before joining the Guardians. Rocket Raccoon's character is quite the prankster, often stealing other beings' cybernetic body parts as a practical joke. However, there could be more to this than just a prank since he is quite obsessed with getting his hands on anything related to cybernetics. This could be a trauma response to his past and maybe his own cybernetic enhancements have caused him to have a fixation on all sorts of cybernetic parts. Another explanation is that he feels incomplete in this new body and wants others to experience this same sense of incompleteness by stealing away their body parts. Though he does not actively intend to make others feel like this, Rocket Raccoon subconsciously consciously projects his feelings on others. In this way, he tries to cope with his sense of incompleteness by making others feel the same. Yet another reason behind him stealing others' cybernetic body parts could be that he is trying to build himself a new robotic body. Rocket Raccoon is often insecure about his species and gets quite defensive when someone makes a joke at the expense of him being a raccoon. Therefore, it is plausible that he is collecting body parts to build himself a new robotic body and leave behind his raccoon. Coon Origins. Mr. Smiles over here. You like Where's your wife, old man? What a class A prefer. <laughs> Rocket Raccoon is a light-hearted comedy element in the MCU. 
Rocket Raccoon abandoned his post as a caretaker on Half-World Planet after years of abuse, and he decided to become a mercenary by the name of Rocket. Rocket was wanted by the Nova Corps for many crimes such as theft, arson, mercenary killings, and escape from prisons, and he was quite a notorious criminal in the galaxy. On one of his adventures, he met Groot on Planet X, and the two traveled together to the space station known as Hub in order to buy more fuel for their vehicle. However, they did not have any money and then took up a job for the crime lord Scraggot. Scraggot sent to retrieve a package from a secure facility known as Uptown in exchange for a thousand credits, which was the currency used in the galaxy. They managed to retrieve the package but then realized that it consisted of a family of snail-like skullisks. Scraggot intended to harvest them for their shells, and Rocket and Groot fought Scraggot's men and finally freed these Skalaks. Groot and Rocket then traveled to Xandar looking for wanted beings with a bounty on their head. Here, Rocket's device points towards Peter Quill, who was wanted for 40,000 credits. Rocket and Groot decided to capture him while he was in the middle of setting up a deal with the broker to sell the orb. Green-headed freak working for a dude named Ronan. While Peter needed to sell this orb that was the containment unit for the Power Stone, Gamora wished to get her hands on it. However, just as Gamora tries to steal the orb, Rocket tackles her to the ground, and then their plan goes astray. Rocket asks Groot to capture Peter, also known as Star-Lord, while Gamora bites his hand. Gamora then fights against Peter, but he defeats her and then celebrates his victory over Gamora. However, this happiness is short-lived as Groot finally captures him, and after quite some commotion, the Nova Corps show up and detain all four of them at the Killin' Prison. Rocket is quite annoyed to be back behind bars again, and then soon starts bragging about having escaped 22 prisons. Peter Quill then asks Gamora about her intentions regarding the orb, and she reveals that she was sent to retrieve it for Ronan the Accuser. However, she intends to betray him and sell the orb to someone else. One of the inmates, Drax the Destroyer, tries to attack Gamora, but Quill convinces him to go after Ronan instead. Quill then tells Gamora he knows someone she can sell the orb to, and Rocket joins their conversation. Rocket then makes a deal with Quill and Gamora and tells them that he can break them out of prison if Gamora splits the profits of the orb with them. Rocket then comes up with a plan that requires stealing one of the inmates' prosthetic legs and a guard's control device. Later on, we discover that he wanted the prosthetic leg just for his own fun and that he did not have any serious use for it. Gamora, Quill, and Groot follow Rocket's plan and they also to get some help from Drax. Rocket then uses his skills to switch off the prison's artificial gravity and takes control over the killing hoverbots that are a part of the prison's security system. Finally, they escape the prison on Star-Lord's Milano spaceship, and Rocket immediately starts ripping off bits of the spaceship to develop high-tech weapons. Star-Lord tries to get Rocket and the others to cooperate and work as a group, and he announces that no one is allowed to kill anyone on his ship. The group arrives on nowhere to sell the orb, and Rocket then gets into a fight with Drax after getting a little drunk in a bar. He accuses Drax of making fun of him and seeing him as a monster, and Peter Quill finally intervenes and tells Rocket to put it up with Drax for just another night before they can all get rich and go their separate ways. Finally, the group is summoned by a buyer known as Tivon, who reveals that the orb consists of the Power Stone. However, while Tivon gets the money to pay the Guardians, his assistant Karina is sick of working for him, and she blows the place up with the Power Stone. The Guardians then dejectedly leave the place when Rocket notices that Gamora managed to catch the stone. She decides to hand over the stone to the Nova Corps, while Rocket suggests that she should hand over the stone to Ronan the Accuser. Things go south at this point when Ronan and Nebula themselves arrive in nowhere to attack Gamora and get the orb. Eventually, it so happens that Gamora and Peter are captured due to Drax's loss of control while dealing with Ronan. Ronan has also managed to get his hands on the Power Stone and his next mission is to destroy the planet of Xandar. Rocket and Drax once again get into a fight and he wishes to leave and go to the farthest parts of the galaxy before Ronan can locate them. However, Rocket eventually realizes that he must help Quill and Gamora and he works with Drax to free them. Rocket hands him a weapon known as a Hadron Enforcer and tells him to aim it at the outlaws while he threatens them to release Quill and Gamora. Rocket then works with the Guardians 
weapons to protect Xandar from being destroyed by Ronan the Accuser. Rocket comes up with a plan and the group works with the Nova Corps and Yondu Udonta to enter Ronan's ship. They intend to kill Ronan in his chambers, but Ronan decides to use the Power Stone at the last minute. Rocket impulsively decides to crash their ship Milano into Ronan's ship before he can use the stone. This severely damages both their ships while Ronan's use of the Power Stone causes both their ships to fall on the city below them. The impact causes Rocket to fall unconscious, but he soon regains consciousness and realizes that Groot created a sphere of branches to protect Rocket from the impact of the fall. While saving Rocket's life, Groot dies in the crash, and Rocket only recovers a twig from his body. Rocket is then determined to kill Ronan, who is giving a speech on how he will destroy Xandar. While Star-Lord distracts Ronan, Rocket picks up his Hadron Enforcer and blasts the Power Stone out of Ronan's grasp. Quill gets his hands on the stone and its energy spreads across its body and almost kills him. Gamora, Drax, and Rocket then join hands with Quill, thereby sharing the energy load and reversing the stone's power. Quill then gains control over the stone and uses some of its energy to kill Ronan, after which Gamora secures the stone inside the containment orb. At the end of this journey, Rocket sits quietly as he holds Groot's remaining twigs and bursts into tears as he mourns his friend's death. Drax can force Rocket and the raccoon initially flinches at the touch but then finds some comfort amongst his new friends. He then officially joins the Guardians of the Galaxy and even learns that Peter Quill's father was half alien which is why he could control the Infinity Stone to some extent. That could be why you were able to hold a stone for as long as you did. Rocket also places Groot's twigs in a pot and Groot once again begins to grow from his potted plant. Rocket then worked on many missions along with the Guardians as they traveled from the planets of the Sovereign to Bear Hurt and came across many intergalactic beings such as Taserface and Eclator. They also had a long history with Yondu Odonta. Rocket once also had to rescue Peter Quill on the planet of Ego and Rocket worked with Groot to destroy this planet as well. Rocket also later appeared during the Infinity War Crisis when the Guardians take Thor on board their ship Benatar. Thor informs the Guardians that Thanos has gotten his hands on the power and space stones. He also asks the Guardians to accompany him to Nidavellir where he can get a new weapon. Rocket then helps Thor and a tree forge the Stormbreaker for Thor. Later on, Rocket made an appearance during the Battle of Wakanda, and he even witnessed Thanos' snap and watched Groot disintegrate into dust right before his eyes. Later, he was a part of the team that traveled to Garden, a planet where Thanos lived after the Infinity War. Here, it was Rocket who got his hands on Thanos' Infinity Gauntlet and realized that the stones were missing. Finally, Thanos revealed that he destroyed the stones and the group returned to Earth after losing to Thanos again. Rocket then aided the Avengers when they found a way to restore the victims of the snap and even visited New Asgard to convince Thor to rejoin the Avengers. After the Battle of Earth, Rocket was reunited with Groot as they successfully resurrected the victims of the snap. Once again, the Guardians of the Galaxy were reunited and this time, Thor also became a part of their group. He has been an integral part of the Marvel Animated Universe. Rocket Raccoon has appeared in many MCU shows and movies and has a widespread presence across the universe. He makes an appearance in one of the episodes of the Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes series where Greg Illis voiced his character. He also appears in other animated series such as Avengers Assemble, Guardians of the Galaxy, Ultimate Spider-Man, and many more. In most of these shows, Rocket Raccoon makes a cameo as a member of the Guardians of the Galaxy as he joins forces with other superheroes to overcome a crisis. Rocket Raccoon appeared in the Rocket and Groot animated shorts where he was voiced by Trevor Duvall. The shorts explored Rocket Raccoon and Groot's adventures from the comics. He also appeared in the Hulk and the Agents of Smash animated series where he was voiced by Seth Green. Besides appearing in the Marvel Animated Universe, Rocket Raccoon has also been a part of many MCU movies. He is most famously known for the Guardians of the Galaxy movies where he is voiced by Bradley Cooper. The Unique Powers of Rocket Raccoon Rocket Raccoon is essentially a cybernetically engineered creature and his body was enhanced to have a cybernetic bone structure, genetically augmented cerebral cortex, 
and an enhanced phalange among other things. Though he is a raccoon, he can converse with other beings, walk like humans, and be considered a humanoid. After his bodily enhancements, Rocket Raccoon gained superhuman strength and agility. He was strong enough to even fight Gamora and he once tackled her to the ground when she tried to kill Star-Lord. As a result of his cybernetic structure, Rocket Raccoon's body is much more durable than other animals his size, and he can withstand most attacks without being severely injured. He has enhanced reflexes that make it easy for him to act fast in dangerous situations. His sense organs are also much more developed than other raccoons, and he can see, smell, and hear better than them. This helps him detect enemies from afar and gives him some extra time to warn his allies and prepare for an attack. Most importantly, Rocket Raccoon has a genetically enhanced cerebral cortex that makes him a highly intelligent being. His cognitive abilities are superior to most beings in the galaxy, and he has no trouble carrying out complex tasks or understanding difficult situations. His advanced intellect also gives him the ability to communicate with any species in the universe, and he can also understand what Groot is saying. He can also pilot spacecrafts and come up with quick defense strategies while under attack. He claims to have escaped 20 prisons in his lifetime and is a master tactician, who can devise escape plans even with the most minimal resources. Moreover, he is a skilled engineer who can easily construct high-tech weapons and equipment. He is very intellectual, and even Thor once referred to Rocket Raccoon as the most intelligent member of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Rocket Raccoon is skilled in combat and can defeat his opponents with his bare paws. Though he is a tiny being, his punches can even knock his opponents out. Additionally, he is a skilled marksman with very high precision while aiming his weapon. He once managed to shoot Quill with a non-lethal bullet while Quill was running away. And Rocket Raccoon has also shot down many drones while they were flying. He can wield many weapons but prefers to use high-powered artillery. No, no. Spit it out. Spit it out. Come on. Conclusion To sum it up, Rocket Raccoon is one of the most exciting side characters of the MCU. He has lived quite an adventurous life and is a lively character with a rich life story. And he has a lot of potential. Though the movies have not focused on his past life and tragic origins, there is still time and we can hope for more of his character in the upcoming MCU movies. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!